What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster here on this Saturday, the weekend in full force out here. It is January 7th, 2023, about 1.41 p.m. California time, and the latest earthquake shows a 3.3 down into the region of South America. The latest earthquake on the map. Let's go ahead and check out uh, some other activity around the globe. We'll cover weather here in just a little bit after the earthquake update. Seen some movement here around the Kuro Kamachaka Trench. Uh, pretty deep, about 141 kilometers deep for a 4.6 just coming in within the last hour. Also some activity further down south coming in this morning time period. Uh, looks like a 4.7 off the coast of Japan and also one from yesterday there, a 4.5. So a little bit of uptick in movement along the Kuro Kamchaka and the Japan Trench area. Also some further movement uh, around the Andaman Sea. This area has seen a little bit of swarming kicking up here over the last couple days, a 4.2 now coming in at 31 kilometers deep. Not a whole lot of westward pressure movement, although there is some on the Earthquake 3D globe. USGS only showing minimal activity following some movement there in western Turkey area, uh, 4.7, and uh, quite a few other smaller quakes there in the mix as well. We also did see some movement uh, off the coast of Morocco, a 5.2 coming in. All this activity taking place following the movement further, e uh, further east. There's that 5.2 into the Morocco area. Looks like that was on shore inland, uh, but either way, this activity occurring uh, well west of the activity here in Turkey, and that's general uh, westward plate movement in this vicinity. A lot of stress buildup heads towards the west in this region. Of course, there's some subduction zones as well, but we tend to follow this train of pressure westward uh, along the plate, uh, plate tectonics there on that uh, map. All right, let's see what else we got. Of course, Greenland up here had some activity last night. Looks like um, nothing coming up. So far today, the Atlantic Ocean looks pretty calm as well. We did see one earthquake into the South Sandwich Islands area, 4.9, about the northern end at 74 kilometers deep for that uh, earthquake activity today. Uh, South America, as we noted on the globe, some uptick in movement, although most of this activity here is showing from yesterday. Uh, but there is obviously on the earthquake 3D globe uh, some uptick uh, in the smaller quake range around the uh, Chile area, northern Chile, and that 3.3 that was just coming in. Uh, a look at other regions here on the globe, showing some movement off the coast of Mexico and also off the coast of El Salvador area, some twos, 4.0 off the coast of Mexico there, it looks like. Um, let's see, the Puerto Rico region, very minimal activity showing up on that map today. Let's see what we got. Uh, about 21 earthquakes and a couple of those from today the largest looks to be a 3.8 west over here near the Dominican Republic at 62 kilometers deep into the states not a whole lot going on of course had some activity around the New Madrid zone yesterday that has since died off it looks like not a whole lot further going on over here we did have one outside of Montreal 2.5 into the Canada region uh, early this morning about two o'clock in the morning Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet into the California region. Got one earthquake here in the Sierra Nevada mountains near Oakhurst, a 2.3 at 12 kilometers deep. And the majority of the activity here along the West Coast uh, is just all microquake. There's not a whole lot going on in terms of anything bigger. Uh, I'm still waiting to see this uh, potential activity and uptick in earthquakes following all the rain we have coming in here to the uh, West Coast. Uh, we'll watch for that. It does take a little time to get down there and lubricate some of those stuck faults, but we should see an uptake, uh, uptick in earthquake activity um, here in the coming months. A 1.5 West Hollywood, shaking things up there in West Hollywood, California. Uh, one of the latest quakes here on the map. Looks like uh, outside of Beverly Hills, a little bit of shaking going on out there in that portion of the state. Now there's quite a bit of fault systems that run underneath this highly populated area. Uh, and some have been just kind of lurking for a long time, uh, ready for the uh, uh, to, to release the uh, next big one here underneath the Los Angeles area. Quite a few fault systems out there. All right, uh, see what else we got. Alaska area. Man, that rain's coming down right now. I'll get to the weather again here in just a second. 
Uh, earthquake activity looks very typical here. Some movement outside of the Trident Volcano region. And uh, looks like the Mount Martin area. Martin Martin. That's a movement down there uh, over in that area of the state. The big island of Hawaii got uh, some activity kicking up. Mostly confined to the Pahala area today. Got the latest quake, a 2.0 or 2.5. Coming in at 32 kilometers deep. No major changes noted here at the volcanoes. Kilauea Volcano. Is still active. Uh, down south here into the Kermadec Trench. Got uh, the latest earthquake. Some renewed deep movement again. Coming in this morning. A 4.6. Uh, just about oh, a couple hours ago. 583 kilometers deep. That is super deep activity. Now we should see some further movement up here along the... Or down here. Or up here. Tonga or the Kermadec Trench. With the general westward plate movement here. Deeper activity does put strain up on this region. Uh, but, for example, if there's not enough strain, not enough built-up pressure here along these subduction zones, we'll watch for further pressure over here around Solomon Islands and the Vanuatu area. Uh, North Island, New Zealand, north of the Lake Taupo volcano, 4.1. This one's deep, 169 kilometers deep. Now, I believe that's into a portion here of the Hikurangi subduction zone that sits offshore of North Island. And uh, that's, that's a big one. That's a deadly uh, subduction zone for the folks there in New Zealand. Let's see what the GeoNet servers here are reporting. Uh, stand by here for just a second, GeoNet. And we'll see what we have coming in three hours ago, that 2.3. Um, now, where is our earthquake? Maybe uh, because it wasn't felt. Let me go to the all magnitudes here and see. Uh, there's that 3.9. Yep. Well, that's it. Well, into the, uh, that kind of looks like it's into the Kermadec Trench area. Uh, the one I'm looking for is specifically here on the USGS model. And that's directly underneath North Island, New Zealand. 4.1 coming in. Okay, just after midnight, it looks like. Uh, let's see if we can find that. Um, so a few hours ago for sure. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Five hours ago. They're definitely having quite a bit of earthquake activity. Nothing big. A lot of small microquakes in the vicinity of the North Island, New Zealand area. And... Just kind of looking for that 3.9. Kind of curious to see where that's at. Let's see what they're reporting it as. Just after midnight here. Uh, they have it as a 4.3. 155 kilometers deep in that, into that area. North of Lake Taupo Volcano. Super volcano. Got to make sure to put that in there because it is a uh, pretty massive volcano as far as the potential goes. The volcanic drums here around New Zealand. We'll chat, uh, take a look at this real quick. There is that 4.3 or 3.9, take your pick. Looks like, uh, you know, showed up fairly nicely across the area. I'm not seeing any further activity, though, following that 4.3 um, earlier last night. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Yellowstone National Park, no swarms going on, just very spotty activity today. A couple of small microquakes uh, in the vicinity there of... Uh, the northwest corner of Yellowstone National Park, but not a whole lot of earthquake activity popping off currently in that area. All right, now we're watching the sunspot here. This is a massive one coming around. Let me go over to a different map, show you guys 3182, a very uh, strong potential. I've seen some further X flare potential here from this sunspot. Uh, it is fairly dynamic and, and stable uh, in terms of the structure of these magnetic poles, magnetic fields. Magnetic pole, magnetic field. Uh, and also this one down here is growing as well. So there's still a pretty high potential of seeing um, another M flare and potentially an X flare here in the coming hours and days. 20% chance for an X flare. Uh, now remember this sunspot that is coming around the bend, 3182, is starting to line up with Earth. And it did produce uh, at least one verified X flare. And they believe a second one uh, when it was behind the southeastern limb of the sun out of view. Uh, so that does harbor some potential of uh, some further strong flaring. 99% chance for a C flare, 40% for an M flare, and a 10% uh, chance of proton event because those uh, uh, these sunspots are facing us. So we'll continue to watch that. No major expected solar storms currently in the process. Um, and um, yeah, all right. So let's check out weather activity here uh, from the GOES imagery viewer. I want to show you guys our next storm knocking on the door here in california 
Uh, this is the most recent one, I believe, here. And uh, it's it doesn't look quite as impressive here on the map as our last bomb cyclone did. Uh, but there is there, this low pressure system here is tapping into a lot of moisture still. You can kind of see the outer bands of it. It stretches well south. Also, there's another moisture plume well south into the tropic area. So we've got a lot of moisture coming in. There is some flash, flashing showing up here on the map, indicative of some earthquake activity there. Or not earthquake activity, let's hope not. <laughs> uh, lightning activity. Uh, and all that's funneling into Northern California today. Uh, again, we just started getting some heavy rain, and we're expecting heavy rain all day and tomorrow. And, uh, man, I tell you what, we got uh, Sacramento River that is rising. I'm going to be over there uh, at the Sacramento River on, man, I'm probably going to wait till, I'm probably going to wait till Monday, potentially, or Tuesday, after all this heavy rainfall, when the Sacramento River is supposed to reach flood stage uh, near the uh, Ord Ferry, Hamilton City area, just outside of Chico, California, here where I live. So things are going to be uh, pretty wet, let me tell you. Now, these model runs only go out the next couple days here. It doesn't look like they've, uh, well, it takes a little time for it to, to build up. But the model runs that we do have continue to show some strong st uh, storms come in to the area with some very high precipitation rates. That's on Monday, Monday night. That's going to be a good one. Uh, Sacramento Valley, northern Sacramento Valley is going to get drenched pretty good. Uh, now, again, this only covers to the next 66 hours or so. Uh, and there's more storms after this. I just want to get a total accumulated precipitation amount over the next couple days. And, you know, remember, we got many more storms coming after this. It looks like rainfall rates uh, into the Sacramento Valley, roughly around five to six inches or so. Up in the mountains, potentially more. Sacramento Valley or Sacramento down here, San Joaquin Valley, getting a little bit less. This moisture is aimed primarily up here at Northern California. Uh, so we're going to get a dandy of a storm coming in. But uh, yeah, it looks like somewhere around uh, 3 to 5 inches here for the Chico area. And of course more as you get into the higher elevations of the uh, coastal range and also the Sierra Nevada. So it's, it's going to be wet, folks. Stay dry. Um, we're not really expecting any wind with this event. Although come Monday... Uh, let's see. Let me go over to the windy map here real quick. There's our massive low pressure system again. Dynamic southwest flow or south flow uh, wind gust. Now there's definitely some wind out there with that low pressure system, but it looks a lot disorganized, a lot more disorganized than our other tightly wound mid latitude cyclone did, which reached, by the way, pressures down to about a category three hurricane uh, strength. So uh, pretty impressive. But uh, a little bit of rain or a little bit of a wind, it looks like today. Nothing major kicking up, I don't believe. Uh, looks like maybe some 30, 40 mile per hour winds. Uh, but come on Monday, we got uh, some stronger winds coming in, I believe. Uh, unless that backed out a little bit. I don't see any wind advisories in effect currently for this area. Um, then again, I may be missing it. Let me see here. Give a quick glance at my weather model. Uh, here on my phone. Uh, oh, yeah, we do have a wind advisory until Sunday. Okay, so gusts up to 40 to 50. So things are, looks like they progressed a little bit here. Again, this is Sunday. Some stronger winds here coming into the uh, uh, Sacramento Valley and the Sierra Nevada. But I do want to do the rain accumulation here off of this model and show you guys the next three days here. This is a G, uh, ECM WF model uh, down here. Next 10 days, check this out. Woo! That's a lot of moisture on top of everything that we got. So it looks like seven inches uh, just outside of Chico, up, of course, in the Sierra Nevada, close to a foot of rain, and uh, portions here north of the Bay Area around Santa Rosa, Ukiah. How's that? 14 inches of rain. Woo! Coming up. Um, I think this is going to put us out of the drought. I'm not even joking. Uh, this is one of the wettest winters we've had in a long time. And we still have, technically, we still have... Um, February and March, uh, and sometimes April, those three months right there sometimes brings us uh, quite a bit of rainfall as well. That's our rainy season. And then, of course, it dries out into uh, May, June, July, August, September, uh, and October during the dry summer months here. But uh, wow, that's either way, there's a lot of rain coming. So, uh, you know, it's a developing process here. Things are um, 
they're continuing and we're watching the rivers around here again sacramento river is expected to reach into potentially flood stage um come uh monday's time frame uh let's see here where'd my map go maybe i don't have it on this one but uh either way i tell you what things are going to be pretty darn wet for sure Let's see what conditions here. Eh, outflow, inflow, <laughs> quite a bit of inflow there at Shasta Dam. Uh, not for certain what the uh, rate is right now as far as the percentage, but we are filling up our reservoirs, which is good news. Uh, the Sacramento River is running super duper high, and um, it's going to enter flood stage, I believe, on Mondays when they forecasted it, but... We'll check out these rivers. Right now, everything looks, uh, well, we'd have to go into all of these and check, but we'll do that a little bit later on tonight. Didn't want to make this a super long update because it's got a lot of rain coming in and I uh, need to get outside and make sure I got stuff covered up again. So uh, on that note, have a good day. Um, I'm in the process of using some software to get uh, my data off of my external hard drive. I had to fork out some money because um, my external hard drive quit working suspiciously. Um, the other night it was open. Uh, it looked like someone I had opened the file explorer, explorer on the computer to view images or videos on the uh, external hard drive and now it's corrupted. So I actually had to purchase uh, some software to get this off of there safely. Uh, and then I'll just maybe format that hard drive. But uh, kind of odd, kind of weird, kind of strange. People just don't know how to leave people alone, I guess. I mean, I don't, I don't like anybody messing with my computer. I don't mess with others' computers remotely like that. That's kind of against the law. But uh, all right, guys, we'll, we'll just go with the punches for now and keep on chugging along. Have a good day. Stay safe out there. Stay dry if you are out here in soggy California. I can't believe I'm saying that again. Soggy California. Woo, it's definitely good to get some rainfall. All right, guys. Catch you a little bit later on tonight. Peace out.